Confidence matters. It matters for companies, it matters for workers, it matters for people who are learning new things. It matters a lot. And research suggests that it not only affects the way people feel, but it affects the way they perform, it affects the way that they persist, and it affects whether or not they stay in work. And confidence has huge ramifications for our world. If we have confident workers, then we're going to actually be able to keep them in, in our companies and help us persist and continue onwards. In addition, it, it, it matters for people who are new in companies, particularly minorities or women in tech companies who might lack confidence right when they enter to help them persist and stay within the company. The topic that I want to talk with you about today is the fact that technology can help build that confidence. For the past five years, I've been doing a PhD at Northwestern that's called Technology and Social Behavior that's half computer science and half psychology, focused around how do we use technology to really help people rather than hurt people. Prior to that, I worked in Disney Imagineering, where I was looking at the way that technology can affect how people feel when they're in the theme parks, and when technology can actually help you bring you into the parks rather than pull you away on your phone. I also spent time at Facebook looking at small business owners and how they use Facebook to get their idea out into the world. And now, I've been, for the past three years, working at a nonprofit that called Brave Initiatives that I founded with two other women, focused on helping girls build confidence in coding. So the three things that I want to really focus on today are that, techno that technology can really help us when it promotes building role models and helps us connect us to a network of role models online, when it helps us see our progress and showcase what we've done and where we've gone, as well as when it helps us build connections and brings us into the world with real people rather than keeping us on our phones. I want to start first by telling you a story that I think amplifies this whole example with a, a girl that I worked with at Brave Camps called Linny. When Linny came into camp, she had no desire to learn how to code. Uh, she had actually, her sister had pushed her literally into the class because she said that she needed to learn and she needed to be there, but she really had no desire to learn. But when we, she came to camp, we ended up realizing that Linny cared a lot about the environment. And she really wanted to use recycling to help build a better world. And so at Brave Camps, she ended up learning skills in coding and helping her build a website called Good Waste. And Good Waste was a site that would help harness people in communities to build recycled goods and help them then get those recycled goods to employ jobs to create businesses for people who lack jobs. And she had this idea, and she ended up putting it online, and then through time getting a, a pool of support of people who were interested in the idea or who wanted to see it in their community, which helped boost her confidence in her craft and actually ended up propelling her idea further into the world. And so to me, Linny represents when technology can actually go right. We're going to talk a little bit about when it can't go right, when it goes wrong, but when it can actually help boost someone's confidence, to help them realize their own potential, and help push them into the world to do something that they didn't think that they could do before. So how does technology impact our confidence is what we're going to be focused on today. And as I said, we're going to be looking at both the ways it can help us and the ways that it can really hurt us. And how do we then design and build it and use it in a way that's going to be used to really help us and used for good. So first, we all are aware that technology can drastically affect the way that we feel and the way that we interact with the world. This scene is probably one that many of you see on a regular basis, or maybe you see yourself in this photo. Um, this is a common scene, at least, that I see on the train every morning when everyone is pulled into their phones and, and think, looking at news or connecting on social media in a way and being pulled into a device. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, but it does, we do find within research that it can drastically affect the way people feel. And what, one of the things that it can do is that when people go online, they can feel a sense of social comparison. And so they look at their phones and they see the lives of others, which are often chronicled only for the positive, and they compare themselves. And they think, you know, that's not my life or that's not something that I could do. They think, you know, they see public shame or public failure and they compare themselves to those people that they see online. And so there are times when this can really breed 
uh, and decrease one's confidence in their own abilities to do work and to actually be strong people in the world. And so that's one of the, the dangers of technology that we need to be aware of. Secondly, technology more than ever before is very, very permanent. When we put things online, they go out into the world in a way that can haunt us. And as we've seen, people lose their jobs over technology. People lose, you know, things that they tweet about can, can live on forever and, and really have negative consequences on what they then put out into the world afterwards. And so we need to be conscious of the fact that technology is incredibly permanent and can really, at times, really affect our confidence if, if it's created in a way that really hurts us. And finally, technology pulls into one of our deepest needs as humans, which is a need for affirmation and belonging. And in a really hard way, it actually often quantifies that. And so it can be very public when we failed, or very public when people don't like something that we do, or put in a negative comment, because it's so public and vocal. And so we need to be conscious of the fact that when we design tools, these thing, types of uh, parts can really haunt us as users. And so creating way, technology in a way that really doesn't hurt us in that way. So we're going to talk about now how it can help. And what are ways in which we can design technology that can do that. So for one, technology really connects us to this network of role models, which we've never had access to before. And so we see, we, we found in the research, for instance, when we were looking at crowdfunding campaigns, that when people went online and they saw that there were all kinds of projects out there that that had actually raised a lot of money on crowdfunding campaigns, people then went out there and created them themselves. We also found that it connected people to a network of others that they just couldn't access, like the Cards Against Humanity designer who ended up finding that there were people across the world in another area that cared deeply about their game when they put it online, which helped them build up their confidence to create more games and to change really the nature of many social games because of putting that work out there. Another thing that technology can do in a really powerful way is it can show us our progress. And many of you maybe use Fitbits or different tools within your phones that track what you do and measure and show your progress. And sometimes that can be painful to see. It can be painful if it shows you how many hours you spent on social media or that you only did 200 steps that day. But in many ways, that can actually help you realize what your own potential is and also recognize what progress you have made. And so when technology is created in a way that's really helping us see what we've done and helps us promote the work that we do, it can be incredibly powerful on building up our confidence. So we found also in, in one of our studies that when people put up their work online and were able to show the progress that they had made as a group in a classroom, that people would, would then could see the progress that they had made in class and could actually cheer them on and encourage them in what they were doing. And so we see many examples out there of when technology can kind of help us realize and see that progress and how powerful that can be. Lastly, one of the coolest things that I think in all the research studies that we did was we found that when people were connecting online and when it actually connected them to someone in the real world <clears throat> that led to <clears throat> an actual meeting, then that inherently brought them, built, helped build up their confidence and connected them in a, a real way. So for instance, one of the classes that I worked with put up their progress in a, in a cheering tool online. And then someone came into that tool and actually said that their work was really interesting and that they could help them. And then it ended up leading them to go offline and actually meet in person to get that support. And so what was cool for us was to see that in putting their work online, they ended up connect with people who encouraged them and actually asked them to go meet in person. Another tool that we looked at was when people were being mentored through an app that I developed called Parachute, and they connected with a mentor in their company when they were new, and that the tool helped them know that the person was in need of help and actually led them to go offline and meet up for coffee. And so if we can be designing technology in a way that actually facilitates connection and also helps us know when people need help and need support, we can really help them and support them in their work. So how do we then use and build technology for good? One of the things that I want to make sure that I emphasize is the power of, using, of having diverse teams and diverse groups of people coming together to build technology. And so we know, and the research suggests, that actually people are more creative when they work in diverse teams, and that the solutions that they come up with take into account the real needs of people from diverse backgrounds. And that's incredibly important, because if we're building technology just with one group of people, which is a tendency to be mostly white men, 
currently, it's changing. Um, if we can change that, then actually the way that we, the technology that we build for people actually is taking into account the needs of users and different kinds of users. And that could have drastic effects on the kinds of technology that we build. In addition, empathetic design is critically important. It, at Brave, we do a process called the design thinking process, which many are now familiar with, where we actually have the girls interview users who are using the technology that they're trying to build. So if they're working on bullying, they might interview girls in schools who are being bullied to think about how could you create a chat window that's actually supporting people who are bullied and the person who is doing the bullying. And so by doing this empathetic design, you're actually really trying to understand what the needs are of the user and how what you're building affects them. And that is critical to designing technology that's really going to empower people and not hurt them. In addition, there's such importance in building technology that doesn't just pull us into the world, even though there are times for that that pulls us into our phone, but actually that pushes us out. And so we find that when we can design technology in a way that's really pushing people out to meet others and to get to know others, it can be incredibly powerful, as well as the way we use technology. So if we're using it just to scroll endlessly, that can be incredibly hurtful for us. But when we actually use it in a way that's helping us find other people and meet other people and see what other people are doing to then facilitate connection, that can be very, very helpful to our confidence. So the cool thing is that the power of using technology is in our hands, not only in the way we design it, but also in the way that we use it as users. And so I think that we have this incredible ability to design it in a way that actually can help us if we do it with thought and with empathy and, and with diverse teams coming together. And this will have a drastic effect then on the kinds of technology we build. And I have a strong belief that if we can have diverse minds like these women at the table, really coming in to think about how do we create technology in a way that is thoughtful and that is meaningful and that is taking into account these different perspectives, we're gonna change the kind of technology that we build. And one of the things that I always say to the girls is we need like, women interested in depression working on Snapchat. We need different minds coming to the table. And I know now it's, it's, that's becoming more of the case. But we need different minds coming to the table to really think about how do we create technology that's really going to change people's lives for good. So what happened to my student, Linny? So it's been amazing to watch her progress of the years. After that first Good Waste website that she built, she ended up building a number of other sites and apps. One, for instance, to help people find recycling bins in their community to know where they could go. Uh, she ended up deciding after high school to go study computer science in college. And she's studying it now with a major in computer science and then a minor in environmental studies. And the other thing that was cool is this past summer she came back and helped teach other girls like herself to learn how to code. And to me, Linny represents the potential of what technology can do when we really harness minds that are curious about solving important problems, but then help them realize the role that technology can play. And so what was neat about Linny's story is that she was able to utilize three things, which I think, again, are so critical to helping us to build confidence through the way that we design technology. One of those things was that she was able to look online and see and access a network of role models who were building projects around recycling like hers and connect to a huge network of people that she couldn't access before. Secondly, she was able to put up her work online and see that progress in a very public way and in a way that actually helped her realize what she had done. And finally, she was able to use this use technology to put her work out there and actually find connections, to find people who cared also about her work, and then to actually go meet up with them in person. And so for me, we have the huge potential to design technology when we do it in this way, and when we actually harness these three factors that can really help people. So I want to close by just reminding you of just the power that you have, whether it's in the way that you use your phone every day, or whether it's the way that you design companies and businesses that are really thinking about the user and the way that it's affecting their performance. Thank you. <laughs>